of St. Matthew is one of the most famous religious paintings by the Baroque artist Caravaggio. It's the first of three paintings on the life of St. Matthew that Caravaggio was commissioned to produce. Pope Francis has even said it is his favorite art piece. And when you think about how much beautiful religious art is in Rome and the Vatican, that's saying a lot. We could talk for hours about the painting and Caravaggio's artistic genius, pointing out all the symbolism contained within it. But instead, I'd like to simply offer a few meditations the painting should bring to mind. This masterpiece depicts a dramatic encounter coming from God's sovereign initiative and the new creation that occurs as a result. Here we see Jesus and St. Peter dressed in the first century clothing we might expect, coming upon the tax collector's table. But Matthew and the others are dressed in the garb of the 16th century, Caravaggio's time. If painted today, they might be wearing khakis or suits. This life-changing experience is not with an idea or philosophy, but with the historic living Jesus of Nazareth, just as our encounter with Jesus was and continues to be. Two men, presumably merchants or other tax collectors, are staring down at the coins on the table, completely unaware that Jesus, the Son of God, has entered the scene. So enraptured are they by earthly matters that the miracle of the divine presence is lost on them. Paul writing in his epistle to the Corinthians that the gospel is veiled to those who are perishing because the God of this world, the enemy, has blinded their minds. Meanwhile, Matthew, with one hand still holding some coins that he's been counting, seems to be pointing to himself with the other, as if to say, Who? Me? You want me to get up and leave it all on the table? Matthew chapter 9 describes the calling of St. Matthew as happening very suddenly, shorter than the other disciples' stories. Follow me, Jesus says, and he got up and followed him. But in this painting, Caravaggio seems to have felt there must have been a pause, a decision being made. Me? Matthew doesn't have a lot of time to decide, though. As you might be able to see, Jesus' feet are already turned to leave. You'll also notice that contrastive light in Caravaggio's painting is very important, part of a technique later known as tenebrism. Light falls on Matthew's face, but not on the faces of the other tax collectors. And there's a halo above Jesus, just visible. Paul writes, The God who said at creation, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Imagine what Matthew must have seen when he looked up from the coins at his table. He saw Jesus' face, and in it knowledge of God's glory, and he received the grace to obey and follow him, leaving it all on the table. In the scene between Matthew and Jesus, there is darkness and shadows, but Jesus' outstretched hand is reaching, inviting the sinner. And look at how Jesus' hand is painted here. It should look familiar. It is the outstretched hand of Adam from Michelangelo's creation of Adam. This is on purpose. Jesus, the second Adam, the new man, has come to call the sinner to new life. And above his hand, the way to that life, the cross. Let there be light, and there was light, God said in creation. Follow me, and he followed him, a new creation. Each of us, when we receive the light of God and decide to follow Jesus, is a new creation. Mm-hmm.